Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Josh Fan of ArrowheadAddict.com and ShowMeFootball.com and today we're going to be previewing Thursday Night Football, Kansas City Chiefs versus Los Angeles Chargers in Los Angeles. Let's get to it. Before anything, let's get to the big news. You guys already know what it is unless you've been living under a rock or you're not on social media or anything like that. But um, the Chiefs are going to be without Chris Jones. They're going to be without Willie Gay, and they're going to be without LeJarius Sneed for this game. LeJarius Sneed is still out for personal reasons after his brother's death, and Chris Jones and Willie Gay are both on the COVID list. Josh Gordon may or may not play either, but um, you know at this point, Josh Gordon hasn't been a huge factor, so uh, that's not the one that we're worried about, although I do have high hopes for Gordon going forward, but that's a whole other conversation. COVID has hit the entire league pretty hard, not just the Chiefs over this past week. And, uh, of course, it just happens to be the week of the biggest Chiefs game of the year so far. Uh, this game is for the division, really. Uh, if the Chiefs lose this, then they'll have the same record as the Chargers, but the Chargers will have swept the season series between the two, and they'll own the tiebreaker. And if the Chargers run the table for the rest of the year after beating the Chiefs in this game, then they're going to win the division, and the Chiefs are completely out on the one seed. The Chiefs cannot lose any more games if they really want that one seed. And it's unfortunate because... I mean, their defense had been carrying them so far. We know that. I mean, the offense, yeah, they were better against the Raiders, but it's the Raiders. That was the only team they seem to be consistently good against um, on offense that they play multiple times a year, um, if you know what I'm saying. So the offense has to step up because, you know, like I just said, the defense was carrying this team, and now you're missing a major starter at three levels of the defense, you're missing your best pass rusher, Chris Jones, your best linebacker, Willie Gay, and your best cornerback, Legereus Sneed. That is not ideal at all. And you guys know me. I kind of fare on the pessimistic side of things, but I was really expecting the Chiefs to handle the Chargers and win by two scores in this game. Now, I mean, I would not be shocked at all if the Chiefs lost just because their offense had been screwing around for the better part of this season and they couldn't seem to get it together. And, you know, we haven't gotten confirmation yet that the offense is completely back in sync. Again, yes, they look better against the Raiders, but that's mostly because of Gus Bradley's stubborn defense. But the offense, you know, we don't know that the offense is back. And if they are, I mean, they're in trouble because they're going to have to score in this game. They just are. Because even though the Chiefs defense had been playing better um, with Chris Jones, Willie Gay, Latarius Need in the lineup, uh, I still think if they were playing in this game, the Chargers were going to put up some points. Because let's be honest, the Chiefs had played some poor offenses in their defense's resurgence. I mean, they played against Jordan Love and Daniel Jones. They played against the Broncos, the Raiders. Like, I, I don't think the Chiefs' defense is a fluke. That's not what I'm saying. But we have to acknowledge they have played some rather crappy offenses, okay? The Chargers are far from a crappy offense. Um, they're a really good team, and they got a gunslinger and Justin Herbert. All right, sorry about that. I just realized for that entire last segment that uh, I was recording with my other microphone, not my main one, but I thought that was a pretty good take. So I'm not going to touch it. I'm just going to leave it at that. And hopefully the quality is better for you guys going forward. So back to the game. Uh, let's look at the Chargers offense versus the Chiefs defense. Now the Chiefs aren't the only team with players out in this game. Um, the Chargers are going to be without left tackle Rayshon Slater, which is huge. He's their best offensive lineman. I imagine Frank Clark is going to be going up against the backup Trey Pipkins. Uh, with the way Clark has been playing, I think he should win that matchup rather easily. Let's hope so. We're going to need him to. Um, and then Melvin Ingram, his first game against his former team, he's probably going to be getting after it this game. I imagine he's got a little extra motivation this game, given it's his former team and all. He This is his first time on the other side of the Chiefs-Chargers rivalry. Uh, but of course, without Chris Jones... I wouldn't expect as good of a pass rush. You'd be kidding yourself if you thought the pass rush was going to be as good as it's been without Chris Jones. It's just not happening. Jaron Reed's got to step up, and Tershawn Wharton has got to step up. 
Uh, they just do. Jerron Reed, he was very disappointing at the beginning of the year, but he's been coming on as of late. He forced that fumble in the Raiders game to get things going. We're going to need big plays from him again in this game. Uh, the Chiefs defensive line, they're going to have to continue pushing even without Chris Jones. And the Chiefs front seven is going to have to hope they can handle Austin Eckler, who's one of the most more uh, dynamic backs in the league. He's really the Chargers' third best receiving option. Um, outside of Mike Williams and Keenan Allen, I expect him to get the ball a lot. Although I'm not sure how he's going to look because when he got hurt in the Chargers last game, he could barely put any weight on his ankle. So I, I can't imagine he's going to be anywhere near 100%, but it looks like he's probably going to go in this game. Uh, but yeah, front seven's got to step up. It's going to hurt not having Willie Gay. I imagine Ben Neiman's snaps are going to increase, which is not totally ideal, although I'll give Neiman credit. He's looked better this season, but that's not saying much considering how bad Ben Neiman has been for the entirety of his career. No offense to Ben Neiman, but let's just be honest. Um, it It's unfortunate because I feel like this would be a Dorian O'Daniel game. You guys know I've called for Dorian O'Daniel. I think he could do a pretty damn good job covering a running back out of the backfield like Eckler. But Spags doesn't seem to be fond of O'Daniel, so I wouldn't expect to see him in this game unless it's an emergency scenario and someone else goes down. Uh, Bolton's going to have to step up in this game as well as Hitchens um, stopping the run. Let's hope they can because the Chiefs are going to have to take away at least you know, one dimension of this Chargers offense if they want to win this game because even though, as I mentioned earlier, this unit has been playing better in the last several games, the Chargers are a much more difficult test. I'm also going to be super, super interested in what the Chiefs decide to roll out at cornerback in this game. Because if you guys remember, in the last matchup, Charvarius Ward was injured. And as a result, the Chiefs had DeAndre Baker playing a lot. And DeAndre Baker actually played pretty well versus the Chargers the last time. He got that BS penalty that was called on him towards the end of the game. I thought he played that perfectly. You know, he's a pretty physical corner. Um, Because look, I would not roll Mike Hughes out there again. Mike Hughes also played extensively the last time these two teams played. And I know Mike Hughes just won AFC Defensive Player of the Week and everything and good for him. But he is a horrible matchup for Mike Williams. Mike Williams abused uh, Mike Hughes when he was on the Vikings. Uh, he abused him in the last game, completely turned him around. Mike Williams had like several catches for 120 yards and two touchdowns. That cannot happen again. You need a bigger, more physical, excuse me, bigger, more physical corner. To put on Mike Williams in this game, I think Charvarius Ward will see a lot of him on Mike Williams, and I think we'll actually see DeAndre Baker. I think last time, the reason for Mike Hughes over DeAndre Baker was a lot more matchup-based, which obviously worked well. That was the right decision by the Chiefs. Mike Hughes actually played pretty well. But, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what they're going to do with Keenan Allen or Rashad Fenton, how much he'll play in this game. It'll be interesting. I'd probably stick Ward on Williams, though, uh, a lot. And maybe some DeAndre Baker as well. I'm sure the Chiefs will move their DBs a lot around. Uh, I think Tyron Matthew will probably play in the slot again like he did the last time. Legereus Need did not play. Uh, we'll have to see, but that's something I'm super interested. That's one of the more intriguing adjustments the Chiefs are going to have to make that I'm looking forward to seeing who it is. But, you know, I'll, I'll be pretty upset if uh, Thursday night we get a tweet saying, Mike Hughes is among the starting cornerbacks. I really want to see DeAndre Baker in this rotation, not Mike Hughes. I don't think Hughes is a good matchup for the Chargers' bigger receivers. Bottom line, guys got to step up. Rashad Fenton, you got to step up. Charvarius Ward, you got to step up. Baker Hughes, whoever is playing more in this game, you got to step up. Nick Bolton, Ben Neiman, Melvin Ingram, Frank Clark, you all have to step up in this game. If the Chiefs can give without their three best players, their three best players that they're missing for this game, if they can still get, you know, a C-plus game out of them, I think they can still win this game. Anything below that, I think you're in trouble. But we're going to have to hope and pray. The game's tomorrow night. I really wish it was on Sunday now because of this COVID protocol stuff, which, by the way, I got complaints about the COVID protocols. I think if you are put on the COVID list, you're asymptomatic, and you've been vaccinated, you should still be able to play. I think this is BS, but that's just me. That could be a whole other video. But consider this. The last time these two teams played, the Chiefs defense was absolutely terrible. They had a couple good drives in that game to start out, but they were terrible. They were still terrible at that part of the year. 
the Chargers put up 30, and the Chiefs were still in it at the end of the game. And for as much grief as the national media and the general public has given Mahomes for his turnovers this year, even though a lot of them have been off the hands of his receivers, Justin Herbert has 11 interceptions this year. Let's create some turnovers this game. That could definitely determine who wins this game, the turnover battle. So, yeah, those are a couple things to consider as we head into this matchup. Now let's look at the offensive side of the ball. Everyone is looking at the Chiefs offense for this game now that the defense has become severely hindered by COVID. The offense absolutely has to step up. I don't think you can score 20, 23 points and expect to win this game. The Chargers are going to score some points and the Chiefs are going to have to answer back. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, you've got to hit your throws. You've got to be in sync. Um, a lot of the problems this year have, become, have been because, excuse me, the receivers aren't in sync with Patrick Mahomes. No more dropped passes, no more miscommunications on these routes. That stuff's got to get cleaned up. We've also got to get Travis Kelsey going in this game. Teams have been harassing Travis Kelsey at the line of scrimmage. They've been pushing him around, and even, even though more penalties should be being called in favor of Kelsey and the Chiefs, they're not. But you've got to get Kelsey going in this game. He's been real quiet recently. Get him the ball. Make him a threat. Establish him. So the Chargers will have to pay attention. They'll have to put more guys on him. Kelsey has been Mahomes' security blanket uh, ever since he's been starting quarterback. But uh, the offense, when they've been struggling, a lot of it has been because Travis Kelsey, where have you been, man? Don't put the ball on the ground. Another thing the Chiefs are going to have to do in this game for the offense to work is to find somebody besides Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill, basically what we said all season, to uh, step up. Because in that first game, if you guys remember, Marcus Kemp dropped the ball that resulted in an interception. Byron Pringle was dropping catches. McCole Hardman was dropping balls. You know, all this stuff. Um, and that was, if you guys remember, the game right before the Chiefs decided to sign Josh Gordon, who, again, may or may not play in this game. But that signing of Josh Gordon showed, man, we've got to get another third option because we just don't have one. Um, a lot of the games where the Chiefs offense has not been working, it's just been because no one else has stepped up. That will largely determine if the offense can get it done or not, is if someone else steps up. Also, the Chargers' run defense is still pretty bad. I think they rank 31st in the league in run defense this year. Um, you've got to be able to run the ball. I know we say that a lot in the Chiefs. They don't run the ball. And that's completely fine if they still want to throw the ball because we know that's their bread and butter. But you've got to run the ball effectively in this game. You just have to. Clyde edwards helaire no more two-yard runs, getting stuffed at the line of scrimmage. These first and second down runs, they've got to start going for some longer gains so you don't put yourself in third and long or in a jam and waste offensive drives. You can't afford to waste offensive drives in this game. It's also entirely possible that the Chiefs' third best receiving threat in this game is their running backs. In the most recent game against the Raiders, the Chiefs actually utilized their running backs in receiving a lot. Darrell Williams had three catches for 31 yards. Derek Gore, two for 23. Clyde edwards helaire three for five. And I really did enjoy the running back by committee approach. I'm not sure if the Chiefs utilized Derek Gore more in this game because it was over pretty quickly and they wanted to get him some more run. But, I mean... He played extensively, and he looked pretty damn good. And he had that 51-yard touchdown run. Get some more Derek Gore, that running back by committee approach. Put some fresh legs in the game. Use those guys in the receiving game. Daryl Williams all of a sudden looks like their best receiving running back. He hurdled the guy into the end zone last game. He's really developed a connection with Patrick Mahomes. He's also the only Chiefs running back with a 100-yard receiving game this year. Um, would love to see him get going in this as well. The Chiefs' third best option might be their running backs. Not anyone in particular, but their running back room as a group together, that might be their third best option. And I think it's something they had to take advantage of in this game, given how the Chargers have struggled to defend the run this season. I know Derwin James and Asante Samuel are both questionable for this game. Also, that'll be something to watch. Even if both of them play, I don't know you know, what their condition is going to be, but maybe attack those guys early and see just how banged up they are. Um, Derwin James is dealing with a hamstring, which those can always be tricky. And then Asante Samuel, he's still dealing with a concussion and has been limited in practice now. I believe you have to clear concussion protocol even if you think you can play um, when your 
handling a situation like this. So I don't know if Asante Samuel is going to play in this game, but Asante Samuel also played really well in the first matchup between these two teams. If he's out of that, that's a big loss for the Chargers, and you'll have to find a way to attack that as well. Bottom line for the offense, get it together. Show the world that what you did against the Raiders is not a fluke. I, I mean, I even said post game against the Raiders that even though we can't take a ton from it because of the Raiders and the defense they run and the way the Chiefs play them, that I felt something. I felt like the team truly did get the offense going like they haven't before since they, you know, began their struggles. But uh, yeah, this is a prove-it game. Uh, the Chargers, again, a legit opponent. They've got some talent on defense, even though they've been shaky at times this year. They've got to step up. If the Chiefs win this game, it's going to be because of their offense. Their defense has stepped up too much, covered for them too much over the past several games. You can't do that this time. Not with those guys that are on defense not playing in this game. That's asking too much of them. It's unfair to them. You've been a team that has relied on your offense for the last several years don't go away from that now you've got the best quarterback in the league you've got Tyree Kill you've got Travis Kelsey there's no reason you should be putting up points in this game and if you limit the turnovers because the Chiefs turned over the ball a lot in that first matchup like I said if you win the turnover battle you're gonna have a pretty good chance of winning this because I think the Chiefs even though they are shorthanded on defense, could maybe force a turnover or two on the Chargers' offense. And then if you can do that and then be perfect on offense, don't throw any interceptions, don't fumble the ball, you're going to have a pretty good shot. So, yeah, those are my thoughts. You know, a, a lot of ifs. A lot of players got to step up in this game on both sides of the ball. But I want to hear from you guys. Who do you think is going to win this game? Do you think the Chiefs' COVID guys that are out for this game is that too much to overcome or are you still confident games tomorrow night i'll hope to be doing a post game tomorrow night after the game despite it being a week night but uh yeah like share and subscribe so more cheese fans can find this and check out my work on showmefootball.com and arrowheadaddict.com i'll see you all in the next one